Tranquilizer pill shortage. The number of wealthy Chinese people leaving the country is rapidly increasing. The CCP deploys anti-corruption law enforcement officers abroad. Xi Jinping's 7 million troops prepare for war. Tranquilizer pill shortage. The number of wealthy Chinese people leaving the country is rapidly increasing. According to The Economist, after three years of sporadic business activity, extreme lockdowns, and government crackdowns on industries like private education and training, the rich in China are more eager to leave the country. Especially after the zero-COVID policy was loosened at the end of last year, people moved around more. The article says that even though leaders of the Chinese Communist Party CCP, say they are against money worship, they have let many celebrities ask for forgiveness for not paying their taxes. While the CCP no longer emphasizes the common prosperity plan to narrow the wealth gap, some wealthy people still worry that they will face greater pressure to donate to society. According to the article, most importantly, wealthy Chinese people are concerned that if friction between China and the US increases, they may face sanctions. As a result of these troubling issues, many wealthy Chinese people want to leave the country, but COVID control measures have made it difficult to do so between 2020 and 2021. Data compiled by Henley & Associates and New World Wealth, which track the flow of wealthy individuals, shows that approximately 10,800 high net worth individuals with an average wealth of $6 million left China in 2022. According to Andrew Moyles, a New World Wealth analyst, the number of wealthy Chinese individuals leaving will increase in 2023. Aside from leaving China, the wealthy are looking for ways to transfer their wealth abroad, but under CCP policies, it is difficult to do so. In theory, Chinese citizens are only allowed to carry $50,000 out of the country each year. But there are many ways to avoid being caught, like using underground banks in Hong Kong or setting up companies overseas and hiring family members to run them. Ten years ago, U.S. border officials were able to find Chinese citizens carrying cash in their suitcases at airports. Recently, billions of dollars have left China through cryptocurrencies. According to the Epic Times' Chinese edition, Singapore has become the preferred destination for Chinese wealthy immigrants in recent years. The growing number of family offices, which are private companies that manage family assets, is the most obvious sign of the transfer of Chinese wealth to Singapore. According to data from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, the number of such offices has increased from 33 in 2019 to 347 in April 2022. The Economist predicts that by the end of 2022, as many as 750 Chinese family offices could be registered in Singapore, accounting for around half of all family offices in the world. Kia Meng Lo, a senior partner at Denton's Roddick, estimates that more Chinese people will register in 2023. The CCP deploys anti-corruption law enforcement officers abroad. The Wall Street Journal reported on March 30, citing Chinese sources, that the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection CCDI, the CCP's highest anti-corruption agency, has begun deploying anti-corruption law enforcement officers in some Chinese embassies, along with other government agencies responsible for corruption issues. Their goal is to track down corrupt Chinese officials who have fled abroad, recover their illegal assets, and seek cooperation from foreign governments. This is the latest step taken by the government in Beijing to strengthen the Communist Party's fight against corruption at the highest levels on a global scale. According to reports, these so-called anti-corruption law enforcement officers are primarily deployed in countries where corrupt Chinese officials may have stashed a significant amount of illegal funds, such as G20 member countries. According to the report, the CCDI promised earlier this year to do more to fight corruption across borders, especially in countries that are part of the Belt and Road Initiative, which includes some G20 member states. Even though the CCP does operations abroad under the guise of fighting corruption and says it wants help from other governments, the Wall Street Journal says that Western countries are getting more and more worried about the Chinese government's illegal law enforcement activities abroad. According to Laura Harth, 
the activity director of the Spanish human rights organization Safeguard Defenders, the CCP's dispatch of anti-corruption law enforcement personnel to foreign embassies appears to be an attempt to legitimize the agency's status and practice of using extra-legal means to force fugitives to return to China. She questioned whether this deployment would have a significant impact on the CCP's potential target population's rights and freedoms. Notably, at a policy meeting in January, Li Shi, Secretary of the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, promised to continue the Skynet campaign this year, as well as work to improve China's mechanism for the application of relevant laws abroad. However, he did not specify how this would be implemented. According to a recent draft, Chinese legislators are considering including similar promises to promote international anti-corruption cooperation in the upcoming foreign relations law. International law enforcement actions usually involve formal cooperation and help requests between governments. The U.S. has criticized China for going after fugitives in the U.S. on its own. The related accusations include, Chinese security agents enter the United Chinese security agents are said to have gone to the U.S. under false pretenses, found suspects, and forced them to go back to China, sometimes by using the suspect's family members as middlemen. Xi Jinping's 7 million troops prepare for war. Japan, the United States, and the Philippines join forces to respond. Recently, the Chinese Communist Party has conducted more military provocations in the Indo-Pacific region. At the same time, the security situation in the Taiwan Strait has gotten worse. Several news sources say that since the reserve personnel law went into effect in March of this year, the CCP has been steadily building up its reserve forces in order to improve the ability of its national defense to be mobilized. The CCP's reserve forces are made up of Communist Army Reserve Troops, Registered Reserve Troops, and Professional Soldiers. The number of reserve personnel in Beijing is not easily disclosed. The CCP's official media reported in September 2009 that China had 510,000 reserve troops, over 5.3 million registered reserve personnel, and 1.2 million military professionals. In other words, China's reserve forces numbered 7.01 million in 2009, and no official data has been released since then. Dr. Yang Taiyuan, a former assistant professor at Taiwan's National Defense University's Institute of Communist Military Affairs, has stated that the purpose of the CCP's reserve personnel law implementation is to hide the army among the people and conceal the CCP's ambition to expand its military. This way, the CCP can directly convert them into active duty troops as needed, becoming a supply depot for the expansion of the CCP's military. Dr. Yang thinks that the CCP's military goals have moved beyond the Taiwan Strait and are now focused on becoming a regional and global power. In pursuit of this goal, the CCP is promoting military modernization and preparing for war, not just against Taiwan but also to counter Western countries. He stated that by 2027, the CCP's reserve forces will number over 7.3 million, with 1.8 million reserve troops serving as the main force. Also, the latest report from the CIA suggests that by 2027, the CCP's military will have the capability to use force against Taiwan. During a recent hearing in Congress, Secretary of State Antony Blinken agreed with this assessment. In addition to strengthening its military deployment in the Taiwan Strait, the CCP has also escalated tensions in the Indo-Pacific region. According to a report by Kyoto News on March 28, Japan, the Philippines, and the United States plan to establish a security dialogue mechanism that involves national security advisors to address the CCP's increasingly aggressive military behavior in the Indo-Pacific. Overseas veteran journalist Yu Feng told The Sound of Hope that the CCP's expansion of its military and preparations for war have created three problems for itself. First, not only East Asian and South Asian countries, but also the United States and Canada, are wary of the CCP's military threat. In other words, its ambitions have awakened the world, and everyone is banding together to defend against it. Second, the large number of reserve personnel will incur enormous financial costs. Whether or not this war can be fought, the CCP has placed a huge economic burden on itself. Third, where will this money come from? 
can we expect the CCP's corrupt officials to pay for it? We can only get the money by squeezing people. However, if the people are pushed to the point of no return, they will abandon their fear and rise up. As a result, the CCP's military expansion, while attempting to demonstrate its alleged strength, is a foolish move. This also demonstrates that the CCP is now in the insane stage prior to its impending death, as heaven wants it to die, it must first make it crazy. Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to get the latest videos. And thank you for tuning in.